everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening. Call and response, nice. <laughs> Thank you, Brent. Uh, I'm Beth Ann Gerstein, and I'm the Executive Director of AMOCA, and I'd like to welcome you this evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm thrilled to introduce our first speaker, Ben Rotai. Ben is originally from Iowa and received his Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in ceramics from the University of Iowa. After graduation, he accepted a position as a studio assistant to Don Wrights, and that's part of the reason we're all here tonight. For those of you who may not know, Don was born in Pennsylvania, actually where my grandparents lived, uh, and received his Bachelor of Science from Quitstown University and a Master of Fine Arts degree from Alfred University. While at Alfred, he became enamored with salt glazing and was dubbed by his peers as Mr. Saw. <laughs> he taught at the University of Wisconsin-Madison for more than 25 years, and when he retired from teaching, he moved to Clarkdale, Arizona, to the Wrights Ranch. The exhibition Transitions in the Amoka Ceramic Studio Gallery reflects on the artwork and the relationship between Don and Ben. The exhibition includes a wide range of wonderful work from both artists. I'll let Ben share his experiences and stories of working with Don, and please join me in welcoming Ben Rotai. All right, uh, this is way bigger than I ever expected, so uh, I, I did plan a couple things to talk about, and I'll try to move as quickly as I could. When I put together this presentation originally, I was told, uh, you have 20 minutes, so go for it. And uh, I said, well, I want to put as much as I can to talk about, and then I'll go through and filter what I can. And I started at about 85 slides and was like, there's no way my wife was looking at me like I was crazy. So um, hopefully we can get through. I, I whittled it down to a lot less, but still, um, we'll move quickly. So thankfully, Beth Ann went through and actually helped me. Um, I start this presentation, of course, with the man, the man Don writes, um, and I'm going to kind of go through fairly rapidly. I would say this is where I was able to kind of cut and paste some of the work here. For those of you that don't know Don or were never able or fortunate enough to meet Don, um, I can just say you really missed out. He was an incredible human being, um, but I tell everyone that he's still with us today. Uh, his pieces, which are in the gallery, um, his livelihood, his stories, the lives that he affected, um, impacted, were so great, so vast. And all you have to do is speak to someone that knew him, and you just immediately understand how important Don was. Uh, so I'll go back and kind of start as Beth Ann did. Uh, I'll kind of pull from Don's slides to bring up. Uh, history of Don. So there's little Donnie, Donnie Wrights there um, on the right. Uh, he was born in Sunbury, Pennsylvania in 1929. Uh, his family moved to Belvedere, New Jersey uh, fairly soon after he was born. Uh, and he was a troublemaker in school, never really liked to go to school, would play in dirt. He talked about that often. And when he got out, he didn't really know where he was going to go, so he decided to join the Navy. Uh, after Don passed away, I was able to help the family a little bit, and I discovered this uh, old slide that was in his records, and that's actually Don giving us a little grin right there uh, in his hard hat. He was a, a hard hat diver, salvage diver for the Navy. <clears throat> so Don got out of the Navy. Uh, he decided to go to school. Uh, he went to Kutztown State Teachers College. Uh, he got his... Uh, Bachelor of Arts degree and was teaching high school. Uh, he fell in love his last semester with ceramics. Ceramics was in the basement. They told him, come on down, check it out. Uh, he fell in love and built his first little kiln, which is in the top right slide up there, and he built it over a drainage ditch. He talked about how whenever it would rain and he was firing, there'd be smoke and things were going crazy and everything. And it's because he was reduced cooling all of his pieces because of the rain that was running underneath his kiln. Uh, he was stocking up a bunch of pots and uh, his wife, Johanna, at the time said, what are you going to do with all these pots? And he goes, don't worry, baby, I got it. We're going to go out. I'm going to sell them. And this is uh, a handcrafted pottery sale. All the cars zip by. They never stop. He decided the next day to go back out. 
and he said fresh vegetables and pottery, and he sold all of his pots with his veggies. So uh, after that, he decided, you know, I really like this. This is something I want to do. So he decided to go to Alfred with uh, Val Cushing, where he got his master's degree, and there's Don throwing a big old pot on a nice kick wheel down in the bottom corner there. Uh, Don then graduated from Alfred, moved to uh, Wisconsin, where he uh, was teaching at the University of Wisconsin in Madison and he fell in love with salt-fired ceramics and became the king of salt. So there's his farm on the right. This is Don with the you know pretty handsome photo of all of his pictures and standing there in front of the kiln looking pretty good. And uh, we'll go back here. Top right is some uh, historical pieces, kind of the functional wear from graduate school. Uh, and then you can see some of the salt-fired pieces that were coming out of that time period in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, the far left one here, he got a divorce with his wife, uh, his first wife, Johanna, and he was kind of going through a rough time in school, and this was part of his tie-down series where he would tie down the actual jars or the lidded vessels, uh, and that was kind of his private space inside of those pieces there. Um, and the outsides were all rough and really jagged, Don became really well known, King of Salt, you know, he was the man and uh, was going to be featured in Ceramics Monthly. He was kind of getting tired of that, decided he was done with salt firing and so done with all those bright colors. And this is an image from Ceramics Monthly. This image here is the image right before he went out to a drive uh, to go visit a friend for a wedding and on his drive back was in a terrible car accident. Um, and at that point, he was told he would never walk again. Uh, but he thought, you know, the, the hospitals for sick people, I'm not sick, this isn't where I'm supposed to be. And he just kept thinking about getting better and getting better. And eventually he started to be able to wiggle his little toe and then he could move his legs and lot, lots of effort and work. Unfortunately, that meant that he wasn't able to do his pots. You know, he couldn't stand, he couldn't kick. So he would spend a lot of time drawing um, and working on pots and at the same time that he was starting to recover, his niece Sarah was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, and at that point, he and Sarah were starting to send letters back and forth amongst each other. And they were doing their, their drawings. You know, Sarah was five at the time and would send her drawings to Don. And Don would, you know, get it back and write her, his drawings back to her. And those drawings started to find their way into his pots, into his pieces. And so you can see there's the handprint of Don on there. That's Sarah's drawing of her lying in the hospital bed, the big monster of cancer above her, looming death, that feature. Um, and then that quilted blanket of Don's mother's that was over Sarah that's here, I'm here, I'm here to protect you. Mm -hmm. um, in the show, David and Julie Armstrong uh, have provided an incredible collection of these Sarah's series works. If you guys make it down there, you have to see these. They're so incredibly moving. But that's part of the history of Don. Um, Sarah started to get better. Don started to feel like Wisconsin was not where he wanted to be. He was doing workshops all over the United States. And every time he came out to Flagstaff and out west, he felt like he was coming home. So he quit the university. He moved out to a very remote ranch uh, called out in Sycamore Canyon called the old Sullivan Ranch. You can see there's the old bunkhouse there uh, and this is what it looked like in the 80s when he first purchased the property. So it's very different today but uh, it's kind of neat to see that history there. Um, and like I said he got into wood firing, wood fired ceramics and that was kind of the point up to where I transitioned to where I was. So. Uh, talking a little bit about my background, my history. Um, I got started in a basement as well, which is fun. I think a lot of potters maybe got started at a Lakes Art Center that was uh, in our hometown. Um, I then took classes in high school, really fell in love with the medium, decided this is what I wanted to do, and I decided to go to school at the University of Iowa. Um, I enrolled in 2006, and in the summer of 2008, the program was devastated. Uh, the floods of 2008 came through and wiped out our brand new uh, $60 million art building that they had built. 
um, and we lost everything. Um, so I had a little bit of a transition period of where I loved making functional pots, but I was starting to experiment with other forms and other uh, types of firings, from pit fire to sagger firing, and then some wood kilns that were around the area. And uh, at this time, the university decided, well, we're in a scramble, we're in a pinch, students are going to show up here any minute, and uh, they wound up buying an old Home Depot building, um, and they converted that for the students. Uh, they set up cubicle walls and decided that all of the art school was going to be housed in this massive uh, Home Depot building. So uh, my instructor, Matt Rood, who's actually here tonight, uh, was part of this kind of reconstruction. Um, we were able to rebuild kilns. Uh, we were able to basically build a whole program, which was really mm -hmm. instrumental to my knowledge and my future. Um, and that culminated into a show that was called The Cost of War, uh, where I had one little helmet for every soldier that had passed in Afghanistan. Um, it was something that I felt has been very important to kind of my generation. We've been in this war for basically my whole life and so it was this kind of what is the true cost of war. So that was my final show at Iowa. Matt had kind of hinted that there might be a possibility of you know maybe getting to meet Don Wrights at some point out in Arizona. I decided that I was done with snow and I wanted to move out in the uh, west and so Matt paired me up with Don and so my assistantship lasted from 2010 to 2014. Um, Matt and Jesse over there in the corner, when Don had moved out to the Wrights Ranch in the early 2000s, he had a major heart operation where they had to open him up actually twice and perform uh, open heart surgery on him. Um, and that really changed Don. He went from making these massive vessels and structures um, to where he needed help and he needed help in the studio. So Matt and a few others were the pioneers of the assistance in the early 2000s. Um, Heidi Krychek, who's also here, she was one of Don's assistants as well. And uh, they started, we started working in the studio with Don by making smaller sections to where you could set them all out on the table and Don would come in and work in the studio by himself assembling all of these structures and forms. Um, but he needed those assistants to help kind of get this underway, which really started a great relationship. Um, I was one of the last, or I was the last <laughs> assistant with Don, um, and just the experience that I had out there was unbelievable. Um, I could spend the next 30 minutes talking your ears off about this, um, but unfortunately we're short on time, but I'll be over in the gallery if you'd like to hear more. Um, there's the young Ben Rotai right next to Don there. That was the first week that I was out at Don's. Um, and then kind of later on in the progression of working there, Larry Maher was my co-assistant. We worked together on a lot of projects. You got to be really good friends with the person you worked every day with. Um, and like I said, the experiences of going and being workshops, various things, uh, the pipe factory down in Phoenix, Arizona. There's actually a pipe right out in front. Um, I was not a part of that one, but it was made in the same place that we made several other pipes. Um, you know, being an assistant for Don meant a lot of very odd jobs, but also some really great jobs. Um, I got to spend a lot of time in the studio with Don, which I told everyone at the time, they were like, how great is it that you're in the studio with, with Don Wrights? And I said, you know, it's unbelievable. I, I pinch myself every time I'm in the studio to make sure I'm not dreaming. You know, this is just, I studied this man in school and now I'm sitting here working on a piece side by side with him. Um, splitting the wood, uh, the endless wood pile for the wood kilns, loading the wood kilns, firing the wood kilns. Um, and then at this time, Don actually had to stop doing workshops. He was getting to a point of where it was getting difficult. But we started putting together these little videos. This is only a couple minutes long. This is one of the videos that we used on social media that I'll show real quick. Move it, move it, move it, move it. That's my plan right there. 
you let the brush, I don't want to negate what a brush will do by itself, you know, but yet I want to control it, but yet not control it, but the brush doesn't have freedom to work. Very difficult to do. See, I'm a control freak, that's a difficult thing to do. Get that brush nice and wet first. We get it really soaky, you really got to soak it up. Get a lot of flying in there, so it really does its thing, see. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, <laughs> we lose the draw. Here you go. See, 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 see. Okay, good. Ben, <laughs> so that just gives you a little taste of what it was like to work with Don in the studio. He does have a Facebook page that all of these videos were uploaded to. Um, one of the features of doing that with Don was he was able to share with a wide audience online. Um, and he did that because He'd stay in the studio, we'd work in the studio, and then I'd put it online, and the next day he goes, hey, what what people write? What'd they say? What'd they say? Read. So we'd sit out by the computer, we'd have coffee, and we'd read all the wonderful comments that people shared. And he was so in love with the community and loved just hearing from other people and being able to share that. And I felt like it was part of my opportunity to really help bring a lot of that together and to be able to share that with the community being on the younger side of the assistants that were out there and having technology at our fingertips and being able to record part of that history so um, part of being an assistant as well as Matt and Heidi can attest there were a lot of odd jobs like spray painting pieces picking up a piano uh, loading up a truck and driving across the country because the kiln had to be loaded tomorrow um, and then mowing the desert which I thought was one of the odder jobs I had um, and then living out at the ranch was also crazy we had monsoons that came through you'd go out and dig trenches in your in your bucket shoes You'd go out, find tarantulas in buckets, you'd find rattlesnakes under the kilns. It was, it was a crazy place, but it was a beautiful place. It was a place that I learned how to fire wood kilns. We fired kilns what felt like the first few years I was out there once about every three to four weeks. Um, we were, he was nothing but prolific in his work. Um, and it was also such a great opportunity to have that comedy with Don and that close personal relationship. This was a trip out to Amarillo and he's killing a dinosaur up in the top right corner there. Um, Jonathan Cross, who came out and helped us fire kilns, purchased a uh, little bullhorns for what we called the Pope Mobile, which was a little uh, golf cart that he drove up and down from the kilns. And then, you know, him wearing one of the helmets that came out of the kilns. Uh, for, for me. Um, and then, as all great things, they come to an end. Uh, Don and I uh, were working in the studio the day before he passed away. Um, June Kaneko came out to visit the following day. Uh, I thought it was really incredible. This was the last picture Don and I took together. Um, and this was the day before he passed away. We were working on that painting, which is unfortunately unfinished in the back. But um, he was determined to really work you know, up to the day he passed, which I thought was incredible. Um, so, the future. Um, part of what I was able to experience was that community. And I think as Don started to see towards the end that uh, we fired a kiln, a couple Anagama kilns, we called them Reitzagama in his large kiln, which is right behind us there. Um, and Don started to invite all really great ceramic artists and the community from all around the country and to help fire with us. Um, there's a picture of Heidi and Hope and Larry and lots of really great people that could come and help fire. And uh, I thought that that was really important and Don was starting to, to really build on something there um, and really start to work towards something that could be happen out at the ranch. Um, part of that was kind of that comedy of what that community could be about. So these were some of the trailers that we did for those firings with everyone out there. So. <laughs> Thank you. 
such a great time there was such a great energy and at that same time we actually stumbled across plans of Don's <coughs> original property he had a little sketched out blueprint that was on these large uh, old drafting papers and it was dated uh, I believe it was 20 years to the day that we were all out there and it was these plans of how he anticipated the Wrights Ranch to grow and become um, today the property is is for sale um, it's not being used by anyone and I know that you know with all the lives that Don were able was able to impact I know that someone's going to be able to come along and we're going to build a really great future for the property and Don's legacy <clears throat> so as Don always ended his slideshow presentations don't drink and draw all right? <laughs> 